Hi everybody. You know, I thought I'd be, I most likely would be playing a game and I thought, nah, I'm not in the mood for playing the game. So I just thought I'd give you, you know, a peek into what I normally will do when I'm not playing games. I first started off with Casper Sight, who I'm subscribed to, and he's so entertaining. I find him so funny. So anyway, he says, Team Capture Most Convincing Paranormal Activity Ever. Now, about three days ago, I started watching Jasco, and I immediately knew that everything, well, just my own personal opinion, that everything he does is just fake. So I decided to type in, while I was watching this, uh, Jasco debunked. And then, of course, that brought me to Beardo Get Scared, and he does a whole uh not a whole series, but he does a few videos on um, where he debunked um, some videos on um, Jasco. And then I went from one that, from that video to another one called Mind Seed that he did. This one here is Ghost Theory, what really happened. And then Mind Seed TV, this is the uh, biggest hoax is revealed. But prior to that, I watched uh, another one. Let's see, is there... Mind CTV caught a uh, faking evidence, scary video reaction fake. Yeah, th now this is a really good one to watch, actually. So I watched the entire thing. And then that led me to... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Gray, who debunks stuff like this. And then from that, I found on his channel, Debunking Ghosts and Paranormal with Logic. Why is everything is getting longer now? And this is the point where he, he reached about being a skinwalker. And the reason why I'm... There, uh, let me up the volume here. You know, I should go... Uh, he's such a funny fellow, this guy. It's pretty serious, but like I said, I just you know, and, and, and this is pretty much what I do. You know, when I'm not playing games, I just go through the internet, and I just, you know, I follow, I first start off at one location, and I follow the breadcrumbs, and wherever it goes, it's whatever is on uh, shown, you know, to me on the right here where I should go and stuff like that, and something piques my interest, and oh, okay, I'll go check that out, and it leads me something else, something else, something else, until I get bored, but. um Uh, well, we'll just go back to this. Those are the three channels. At least I don't think I have. Oh, one sec. One second here. Okay, let's continue on. So, it'll be interesting. And it's Sir Spooks. <laughs> My name is Sir Spooks. When's the last time I watched Sir Spooks? About half a video of two weeks ago. Probably falling asleep in bed. Not because I'm not, I'm not saying that because Sir Spooks is boring. I was probably watching it in bed and I fell asleep. So, uh, right. We're not going to watch a compilation video because it'll be ones I've already seen. I I mean, like the three hour, three hour and 45 minute long bloody. Oh, just to let you folks know, I, I don't own the rights to any of this video, uh, any of the videos or anything like that. All credit goes to these guys. No matter which I watch. All credit goes to these guys. Now, to me, I'm just letting you have a, you know, a peek into what I do when I'm not playing games. Which, I do this actually more than playing games. So, anyway, let's continue on. I don't critique anything. You know, if I do come across something that I think I should, you know, speak up about a little bit, then I may do that. But for the most part, you're not going to... I'm just going to mute my mic and go off from there. All right, let's... Continue on with this craziness. Compilation video, I'm definitely not going to watch that. We're going to look at 10 scary videos that will give you the chills. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Sir Spooks, and today we'll take a look at 10 <laughs> scary videos. Number 10. This first video comes to us from a TikTok user known as Johnny Grin. 
footage in question may only be 9 seconds long, but it's a chilling 9 seconds that will leave you puzzled. The footage shows Johnny walking around Is it the Appalachian Mountains late at night, all by himself. It's the Appalachian Mountains, it's 100% gonna be a Bigfoot. Or cryptid. One of them. Is Bigfoot classed as a crypt cryptid? I think he is. I don't know. Self. Something that a lot of people would never have the courage or bravery to do. I'm gonna do that understandably one. so. While wandering around the area, Johnny promptly thought that all was going well, but that all changed rather quickly when he suddenly heard a terrifying noise somewhere nearby. Let's do it. Have a listen. I'm, li I'm ready. So it's, it's a load of people screaming, help me, deep in the forest at night. I mean, if it was real audio, that would be absolutely bloody terrifying. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't think it's a ghost or nothing. And I'd be thinking, oh my God, there's, there's crazy shit going down in the, in the forest. Do I run towards the noise or do I run to get help? It's a, a weird situation to be in. And um, I don't know what I would do, but or add it in. We don't know. We don't know, I'm gonna listen to that one more time. Now, there, there is a jump in volume between the first two help me's to the second. It's not like they're running closer. It's literally a jump, but I don't know if, if this Johnny Green did that to like, to say, oh look, to listen to this is terrifying. So I can't really say if it's added or not. It's a high possibility, but we don't know the whole situation of this, so... I'm not gonna say it's a fake video. I'm just gonna say we don't know, because, you know, you, you just don't know. It could be a real video. It could be some people out in the forest doing some shady shit and someone was in trouble. You just don't know. You never know, especially in the Appalachian Mountains. You know, maybe they were running away from Bigfoot. I don't, I don't know. So we're just gonna move on to a second clip, because that was nine seconds. <laughs> My rule of one clip is not working right now. A lot of people in the comment section are thinking the exact same thing. That noise sounded exactly like it was coming from some sort of skinwalker. What? Of course, nobody can confirm this for sure. Way, way, way. Right, hang on. Let me let me go big screen for this because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Where did that hypothesis come from? My first reaction is someone in trouble or they've added an impost. But no, people in the comments, it must be a skinwalker. Because nobody can think of any originality shit. <laughs> Where did that come from? Skinwalkers. It's ridiculous. Right, skinwalkers, right? Obviously, we all bloody know about skinwalker shit. <laughs> right. Right, this is the actual description of a skinwalker, right? And this is why it always bugs me when I see it in, like... Paranormal videos. Oh my god, dude, this is a skinwalker. I nearly died. Goff. But this is the genuine, I know it's Wikipedia, I know, I know. I'm just saying, this is the actual description, right? In Navajo culture, a skinwalker, Navajo, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that, is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. So, if we are to say that those screams of, help me, was a skinwalker, why didn't they howl? <laughs> you know, wh why are they all of a sudden not an animal? And why is the skinwalker running asking for help? Because I, I only heard human voices. I didn't hear like a howl or a growl or nothing. I oh, uh, before I continue on here, um, if any of the folks who own these channels uh, want me to pull the video, just let me know. Just email me, and uh, I'll pull it. I mean, it's not a big thing, right? I'm just bored, just wanting a videotape, and uh, that's that's all. So, but if any of you folks that I've or whoever I show here, if you don't want me to have video up, please just let me know. Don't strike my channel. That that's just stupid. So, just email me. I check my emails several times a day. 
And once I see that you guys want me to take it down, fine, I take it down right away. Anyway, let's get back on with this. I hear normal human voices. It really grips my shit, right? <laughs> when people put skinwalkers in their bloody videos, Twin Paranormal does it all the time. I don't think they've ever seen a creepy thing in their life. I mean, people in the UK somehow have had skinwalkers in their videos or, or insinuated, which is ridiculous for a start. I mean, the skinwalker in that, the Navajo culture, it's, it's just an urban, not, it's not even an urban legend, it's a, a legend, a myth. We all, all have them over here. We have the Banshees in Ireland. We have the Grey Ladies in, UK, in Wales and England. There's always going to be legends and witch myths. No, no, witches and myths. It's always the same. In the Navajo culture, it's skinwalkers. In YouTubers... <laughs> Paranormal investors can't help but say, oh my god, I got attacked by a skinwalker. How did I survive? Moving on, I don't know why I got that, and I don't know why that annoyed me so much. But it did. <laughs> I want to see who we're in the... <laughs> I like so this you guy. discovered a Wendigo. I want to see who said skinwalker in these comments. Uh, haven't you heard of a Wendigo? What's the difference between a skinwalker? I, you know, I actually don't know. This is the last victim of the voice. Vict this is the last voice of victim Skinwalker killed. There's no way this is a real order. Tomcat, if I if I was if I was a TikTok user, I'd heart you right now. <laughs> I'm out hiking alone at night in the middle of the woods and in the Appalachian Mountains. Is no one concerned by the fact that it's getting louder? It's a Wendigo, and since it sounds far, it's close. Creepy Theory, a commenter said it would be Skinwalker's last mim victim. Mimikin and another said it could be the lady that got lost and later passed in the forest. Geraldine Largay. Alone at night, Skinwalker. Everyone is saying Skinwalkers. What if some guy has been mauled by a bear and somebody's like, Exactly! Paxton's bloody got it! <laughs> Do you know what? Because I went so long on ram ranting about that. We're just going to stick to the one clip for Sir's Boots. Right? Because, yeah. So we have Haunted Fies. I think that's either chilling videos or scary video, I'm not sure, and the other way, vice versa. So, anyway. <laughs> Whoever that is! <laughs> scary videos. So, I don't think I've actually watched... Oh, look, there's an actual compilation I must have watched at one point. So, I can't remember watching it. So, I've obviously seen something. <laughs> Mostly, I have not watched it. Maybe it popped up on, like, a rabbit hole binge when I was falling asleep in bed. They've been going a year, and they have pretty much the same stuff as other top five channels. What's the description? Is the description different? Scary videos reaction is the place of all scary comp and scary comp compilation of scary, creepy, haunting, and real life ghost videos and paranormal activities. <laughs> In this channel, used video uh, belongs to their respective. Or okay, I think it's, it's possible the English isn't his first language, which is nothing wrong with that, by the way. I'm just you know stating the fact. Let's watch six scary videos of real ghost encounters caught on camera. Hello? Jesus Christ, that was la- Oh my God. Are you fucking serious? I'm actually gonna skip that one because we cannot talk about he who must remain silent and he who will not be named. So I'm gonna skip that clip. If you ask me why, you shouldn't know why if you're in the paranormal community. Go look, up, go look up Exploring with Fighters if you want to know why. But anyway, I'm going to go to that one instead. Seven scary videos that will haunt your dreams. This I'm already haunted. This scary video is from the Reddit user Mental Health 1484, in which we will see something truly terrifying. Now that's... See, I'm already annoyed. Now, it's an AI voice narrator, right? I, I understand why some people do it, but I don't like that. I really don't like it. If, you, if English isn't your first language, maybe. But bring someone in to do it for you. I don't know. I just, I'm not a fan of AI speak, uh, narrating. It sounds ridiculous. Because <laughs> <me. laughs> they get like AI sounding narrators, which try to sound like professional like, you know, like they're reading a bloody Lord of the Rings book or something. Because they read the AI voice prompter, or voice narrator, I should say, is just reading what the person has written in the script. But if that script is no good, and it sounds like, say, for example, like a 15-year-old a writing it, 
it shows, but with a professional voice. It's really jarring, if you ask me. Unless this is a real guy, but so far it sounds like an AI voice. So anyway, I am digressing. I do apologize. I mean, we read it. Mental Holiday 1484. <laughs> oh fuck me that actually made me jump <laughs> that generally gave me shivers on my spine <laughs> is something gonna jump out of me i don't this is nothing to do with paranormal it's just a scary video like you said is something gonna jump out of me i'm actually worried for a jump scare now Oh, you fucking Out shit! Out of nowhere, a ball <laughs> is thrown, and suddenly, a little... <laughs> Even though the video is bollocks, that genuinely gave me shivers. I mean, scary videos delivered. Scary yeah, videos cool. delivered in what they said they were going to do. They scared me. <laughs> it's bullshit, but they genuinely gave me shivers. Fair play. I really like that. It's bollocks. I mean, you shouldn't have to have anyone explain that kind of video, but it was at least scary. At least it was scary. So I'm actually going to watch the second clip from that channel, to be honest with you, because it genuinely shit, <laughs> shit fans. We listen to his explanations <laughs> for whatever reason. Boy materializes behind the cameraman. The child giggles before inexplicably running through a closed door without any prior indication. It's very good, man, I must say. To the horror of the person recording, the face of a woman appears to lean at... No, I, I don't know why I'm... No, straight up, right, obviously you should know this is bollocks, right? You should know. But it's really... It is genuinely well done. They, but they, they're using 3D tracking, right? And it's, it is honestly well done. They'll, they'll film it twice, you know, looking at the door. The same with the kid running across, but with the face coming through the door, they'll film it twice. They'll get a rough angle, a rough, like, sort of try and keep it as best as they can. You know, the, the, the panning of the camera. They'll keep it as good, best they can and film it twice. One with the door closed and one with the woman poking her face through the, um, the doorway with the door open. And then in post, they'll edit those together using 3D camera tracking. It's really well done, I must admit. But that's all there is. I'm not, I'm not, exp I'm not telling you it's a fake video. I'm just explaining how it's done. Because it's as clear as day of how much bollocks it is. But at least it's fucking scary because it scared the shit out of me. I'll give you that. <laughs> TikTok user Johannes shared TikTok. this spooky video on his account and states that... His friend was working away in a dark basement when all of a sudden this happened. Hang on. I know that word. How about Fanny Helvetta? <laughs> Sorry. Angel? How am I? Paolo? Is that an old dude? Is it going to be a jump scare again? You don't know with these videos now because I was already scared. It's gonna be a jump scare. I know it is. I'm ready. Bro, what? Jesus Christ, I maybe jump. Halvita. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what this video is. It's just an old guy. <laughs> an eerie fit. That's enough of that, child. <laughs> that was scary videos. I mean, the first one genuinely scared me. The second one was just an old dude in the basement, I don't know. So we got left. Haunted Fies and I think it was called Chilling Scares, I think. <laughs> Chilling Scares. Again, I have never seen this channel before. This channel features a wide variety of true horror content. This includes, but is not limited to, first person horror stories and disturbing list videos. To get featured on this channel, feel free to send your stories, experiences to our email. Please avoid sending anything fictional as the channel only... The channel only features true horror stories experiences, right? Remember that quote right there. Now these might just be actually 
story, so I might have to skip this one. Okay, so this channel isn't a scary video, ghost video thing channel. It's a disturbing stories, true horror stories, right? It's not that. So we're gonna have a look at the first clip. Or oh, I'm just gonna skip entirely and go to haunted fires. But we're gonna have a look at the first clip and see if the story they tell has any credence to it, at least, right? So we'll we'll just have a look. Most disturbing camping encounters caught on camera. Sorry, I was doing the drone in April 2019, a YouTuber named Jason uploaded a video to his channel, Abbey Mountain Trekkers, in which he recorded footage of his solo overnight trip to the mountains. His channel is dedicated to all things outdoors, in which Jason frequently uploads videos of his adventures hiking, camping. All right, what's his name? Happy Mountain Trekkers. I want to check one thing first before I uh, go further with this. Where's his channel, damn it? YouTuber named Jason uploaded a video to his channel, Happy Mountain Trekkers. Happy Mountain Trekkers. Happy Mountain Trekkers. I wanted to check, just in case it wasn't one of those chat you know videos where like and he, he was never seen again because i always feel bad for people who do those kind of videos but anyway in which he recorded footage of his solo overnight trip to the mountains his channel is dedicated to all things outdoors in which jason frequently uploads videos of his adventures his hike up to the mountain is pretty uneventful and as soon as he arrives at the campsite jason begins setting up his tent and shows his viewers how he starts a fire as the sun begins to set i actually like watching these kind of survival videos because you never know <laughs> <laughs> you never know when that zombie apocalypse is going to happen, because it will. Anyway, sorry. As he waits for the day to end, he tries his luck at spoon carving. And this is when he reports hearing a strange sound coming from the top of one of the mountains. But he writes it off as a bird or some other small animal and continues setting up for the night. At about 9 o'clock, he turns his camera off to go to bed. But less than an hour later, he wakes up to a strange sound that he says he's never heard before in his life. He mentions it sounded like some sort of guttural animal call, but because it came from pretty far away, he couldn't identify what it was. I'm still rattled. I've never heard anything like that in my life. It sounded like a mix between a... almost like a pig. Some kind of... No, I'm not even... I hate to even say it, but a pig, an ape, and... Bigfoot. The calls almost sounded like how the velociraptors... Still shaken after the rude awakening, he tries to go back to bed, but just a few hours later at around 1 a.m., he wakes up again to what he describes as the sound of something or someone circling. I'm not talking much, by the way, because I'm genuinely interested to hear this, uh, this story, and we'll see what happens at the it's end. 10. <sighs> Whatever it is, it's close. I can now, definitely hear the footsteps. You can hear those uh, footsteps. They sound like they're in the distance, but you know, we'll continue. Yeah, because you can hear them going through the leaves. It's really cool. Because uh, I have my headset on. So, anyway, let's get back to this. Whatever it is, it sounds like there was two or three of them. And it started on the other side of my camp. Went around my perimeter. If you look closely at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you can see the reflection of what appears to be one or two sets of eyes as he pans his flashlight over. I don't think as eyes. Although, I think it's obviously like a metal drum there. It's probably just something reflecting its torch. So we can rule that out for a start. There are many animals with eyes that reflect light at night based on the fiery white color of the reflection. Hang on, wait, wait, hang on. Although there are many animals with eyes that reflect light. It's either reflecting his torch or it's actually giving off light and reflecting onto the leaves around the, the light, little light source. That's not how animal eyes work. They reflect the light from the, the back of the retinas towards the camera, but, um, and towards the viewer, I should say. But they don't give off light. <laughs> that's not how light, that's not how animals' eyes work. So whatever that is, is either a reflection of whatever his torch is you know, glancing over at, or it's a little light source to make it look like eyes. Now I'm gonna say it's a reflection of his torch off something, but either way, it's not animalized, per that way. Dog's eyes will also give off a white reflection, but considering that it was around 1 a.m. Again, they'll give off a reflection, but they won't cast light onto the surrounding areas. 
It's just not how eyes work. Spell on oh, this channel. Where can I find it just now? Oh yeah, four years ago. Wonder what he's doing. One year ago, back on the wireless test on some new gear. Mr. Mountaineering. Nice to see you update. Hope you're doing good. Five days ago. I hope he is doing good. I mean, that was nothing paranormal. The, the eyes were simply reflecting of his torchlight, and he probably didn't mention it because he either didn't notice it or he, he was the exact same as just my torch reflecting. But I hope Happy Mountain Tre Trekkers is. Now, as ago, we're not going to watch that. Uh, seven scary ghost videos testing your courage. Let's do it. Haunted Fives. A few weeks before Christmas, a man was visiting his parents' house and loading a Christmas tree in the back of his car. The family lives out in the woods, and every time he goes out to visit, he always gets a strange feeling he is being watched. I think this is another AI narrator, but I'm not 100%. The family hasn't experienced any paranormal activity inside the house, but they can't say the same for the surrounding woods. They have several cameras throughout the property to add an extra layer of security for the family. As the son finished loading up his car, the mom checked the security camera and was stunned by what she witnessed. What did we witness? It's a chicken! Or a rooster! It's a deer! Oh no, it's a dude. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Just moments into the video, we can see a pale humanoid figure walking through the trees from left to right. Okay. After a certain point, the figure decides to kneel down and out of sight. If this wasn't creepy enough, when he goes to close his car door, two strange hands appear to reach out and grab him. The family right. is certain that nobody else was on the property at this time, and they okay. have no idea who or what it could have been. Okay, we took... No, first of all, right, we're taking the family's word for it. You have to take their word, unfortunately, because there is no proof either way that there was nobody else on the property, right? Fair enough. It's 100% a dude walking in the background. Looks like he picks, leans down to pick something up. Or like, lying on the floor for whatever bloody reason. Either way, there's 100% a person in the background of that footage. Now, the thing at the car door, if we have a look again, bear in mind the bad quality of this camera, because that will... That that uh, that that will mean something. I have no idea who or what it could have been. If this wasn't creepy enough, right, that, when he goes to close his car door, well, that is no hands. That looks like to me it's the car door when it shuts. The the little draft from the door shutting is creating a little updraft and disturbs the leaves, which the leaves on the floor. And the reason it looks like hands is because the it's such a low quality camera. You know, it's it's basically artifacting in and out because it's just a crap camera and it's obviously zoomed in i think they just leaves rushing from the draft of the door am i 100 percent on that no i'm not but logic dictates either it's creepy hands coming from under the, the car or the car door just because the hands co the movement coincides with the door closing or it's brushing up leaves I'd I mean, say that's either way, the there's a dude in the background, and like I said, you yeah. have to take the word for it that nobody else was on that property at that time. Or they wanted to make a creepy video. You decide. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. I just noticed this here, the aliens of Miami are actually talking. Debunking ghost videos, the paranormal logic. Okay, hey cool. guys, Darth Rolls Mr. Grey, Dandalf the Grey. Or anymore. Today we are going to look at some disturbing, terrifying footage. Probably not. But before we do, apparently this has been aliens in a Miami mall. Terrifying. There they are. Apparently, people have been seeing 10 foot aliens in front of a mall in Miami during an entire big police operation. Now, the police 
We're there for about 50 teenagers all armed, all fighting with each other for whatever reasons. Gang warfare. Big up the gang warfare. But then one Twitter user, it's not X, Twitter user, from her high-rise building, she could see 10 foot tall aliens. And that's why the police were there. So the Miami police had a big operation, lots of cars, you know, a very big police presence. And this footage here is apparently where you see the 10 feet aliens walking in front of the steps. To me, it just looks like three people are walking side by side, but who knows? The Miami Police Department had to come out and say there are no aliens, no ETs, and no UFOs. Well, that's what they're gonna say, innit? Aliens in the Miami. <laughs> but yes, the aliens in the Miami shopping mall incident is a nothing story. People need to get a grip. The aliens in the Miami mall is a complete non-story, just made up by a Twitter user, probably to get engagement, because that's all Twitter's churned into now. I'm not calling it X. Elon Musk made a massive mistake calling that platform X, but that's pretty much what Twitter's turned into now, it's turned into engagement farming. Come up with something ridiculous, get people to engage with the tweet, you get paid. That's the way Twitter works now. Only if you're a blue check marker, who's gonna pay for that shit? So yes, it's just a non-story made up by a Twitter user. Complete and utter bollocks. So let's go watch some scary videos. So what we are gonna do this time, we're gonna look at, no one I usually look at like a, no one I usually look at like a scary channel and we'll try and debunk whatever we have a look or just laugh our tits off. I'm going to do that, but instead I'm only going to do two clips per channel. Welcome to the wheel of creepy things and chills. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is from each channel, we're only going to watch two clips of their most recent or like one, whatever, whatever. And we'll see what we can see. Now for those new here, this is a breakdown analysis. Yeah, I didn't know that he was going to be doing this. I thought he was just going to be specifically going into the aliens in Miami, but okay. We'll continue on. Of the paranormal ghost videos, whatever. Debunking ghost videos and the paranormal with logic. I forgot to say it. I talk a lot. I pause a lot. Whatever. And we'll see what we can see. These are the kind of videos where we'll see that's worth a deep dive in the debunk. What's the point in that bollocks? That's what this is. I had to convey in the comments that I skip way too much. I'm not gonna skip anything. I am, I am ready. I am so bloody ready for this. But anyway, we're gonna spin the wheel. Oh, I'm excited. Before we go further, please go to the links I have linked down below. Go watch them first, like and subscribe, whatever you want to do. And come back and we'll see what we can see. Okay, so on the wheel, let's explain the wheel of uh, creepy things and chills. We have Bizarre Bub. Top fives, depths of despair, nukes top five, chills for whatever, uh, King Frostmay and a boy slapped hand. I think I've got all the major ones. I can't think of anymore. But anyway, just gonna spin it and see what happens. Slap I haven't watched Slap Dam in a while, to be honest. Now, maybe, because we're only doing two clips per channel. Once I've done that channel, you can't be chosen again, right? But maybe we'll go to the, 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 the very beginning to what they think is the most impressive. I haven't thought this through. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the... No way he says a number one, that one. Do you know what I'm Kevin? This, this is Slap Ham. We're about to see some of the most mysterious videos going around the internet. I'm so ready, Callum, but I'm going to skip to where I can see number two. Number two. You know what? Save searching through. And for, and for first viewing value, that's what I'll call it. I'm just going to go from the beginning of the videos. We'll get to the full ones in future videos, Brandon. So smash that subscribe button right now and get ready. So like for I said, only the first content. two videos, like the first cli two clips we're gonna watch. I will stop touching my mic, I swear. 
an anonymous user posted a chilling image to I just realized, hang on, sorry. The mysterious user, who later deleted their account without explanation, accompanied the image with a crucial backstory. Like I said, I'm not gonna skip. As much as I want to every single time, I'm not going to skip. I'm gonna read that myself, actually, because Callan, I'll let Callan do it, but come on. I'll start by saying I live alone and usually scoff at Hollywood's paranormal tales. <laughs> However, a disturbing noise jolted me awake just as I was drifting off to sleep. Intrigued and somewhat spooked, I ventured to investigate the source. To my astonishment, I found my treadmill running on its own. This struck me as odd because the treadmill requires that a is odd. key to be attached before it can even be started, and it was indeed attached. Determined to rule out any intruders, I accessed my surveillance footage on my phone, only to stumble upon this eerie revelation. Surveillance footage appears to show oh, an right. I wasn't sure what I was looking at. Right. a girl in a white dress. I mean, it definitely looks like a girl. What's this Reddit? Is it? This is the first clip. I'm already diving into it. First off, I, st I live alone. I'm not so typical. Believe for okay, he, he just said that. No, does this appear to be a girl in the what in a white dress? I mean, it does. I want to know what she looks like. <laughs> oh, she's been she's deleted her account, of course. I mean, I I want to know what she looks like first before we say that's a creepy ghost girl. I'm just saying because it does indeed look like a ghost girl. It does look like a ghost girl, and you know, it does indeed what she looks like. And you know, you're taking her word for it. But she was alone at night or she weren't there when he was feeling uneasy. The uploader revealed that the image had been sent to them by their mother, who at the time found it rather perplexing. In the picture, a string on a blanket appears to defy gravity, standing upright in an eerie fashion. It does. Yet it's not just the peculiar string that makes this image disconcerting. If you adjust the brightness and take a closer look at the background, you may spot something unsettling. There's a figure lurking in the shadows, seemingly human in form. Oh, come the... Oh, no. I was gonna, like, suggest that maybe she took the photo while she threw the, the blanket down and it was just... The string was just caught in gravity. But then you pulled this bullshit. Who's that ghostly figure who's wearing, like, a t-shirt with a cat's bloody logo on it, but looks of it. In fact, it looks like... Uh, what's, his, what's his name? What's... Uh, not Scooby-Doo. One of the cartoon dogs, I can't remember his name, that's what he looks like. And just this normal jacket, there's the hands and there's the hair. It's a person. It's a person. Now it's the person who took this photo, or the daughter, whatever, saying this was a ghostly woman and I don't know who it was. I'm gonna say, bullshit. So what, if I, what I'm guessing is, the daughter took... <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to something else here. Um, nom, nom, nom. yeah, I thought I was going to be able to mall. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, we'll get rid of that. This is his channel if you want to subscribe to it. Mind CTV caught faking. Mm. Actually, I like this dude. He is so funny. And like I said, he's, he doesn't take himself seriously on anything. But he's, he's fun to watch sometimes. The night, mate, on uh, Saturday night, holy moly, we managed to raise $3,100, okay? That is on a freaky dookie. <laughs> Let's do this. Shh. Go on, my junkie. Top 10 scary ghost videos. Hmm. The Phantom of the opera. The first ghost video for today was recorded on a CCTV camera on a farm somewhere in Chile and is apparently footage of a quote. It's cold over there. <laughs> real ghost caught on camera. Is it that shadow bastard there, look? Is it this? Holy shit, mate! 
captured on a CCTV camera. A mysterious what? dark shadowy figure can be seen floating on the left side of the screen. The shadowy figure almost appears to be moving. Then it is, mate. There's a couple of them. There's a whole gang of the shadow bastards, mate. Then, as the people get closer to it, it quickly disappears out of sight. So, what? No way. What the hell is that? Is that a shadow bastard for real? Do you think this is? Is this a real ghost caught on camera as the uploader claims? You tell me. If you're a fan of scary videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. Slap the bell, mate! Paranormal activity. This next paranormal video comes from one of my favourite paranormal investigation channels on YouTube, Ghost Theory. Oh, Ghost Theory? Okay. And Elliot visit an old abandoned house located miles out in the middle of a forest, and the house is said to be haunted. The ghost hunters... I can't remember what that film was. It was a bloody good film, though. ...start their par... See, that's the thing. Um, it's this here that brought me to Ghost Theory. What really happened. And if you go in Ghost Theory uh, debunked or something like that, you you most likely will see this fellow talk about that. But anyway, um, like I said previously, if any of you folks out there who stumble across this and you go, oh, geez, Casper Spy or Casper Site comes across, just send me an email saying, take the video down, I'll take it down. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just doing this because, like I said, I'm bored. And also let you folks know, I don't earn one red cent from my channel. I don't have a patron account. I just read about my channel and, and I tell you right there what my channel is. The reason why I have my channel. Like I said, no patron account. No one donates. Everything I do is just because I'm bored and I want to be able to watch my videos at a later time. Anyway, let's go on. Paranormal investigation at the haunted house and immediately begin hearing strange knocks and bangs echoing throughout the abandoned property. And at one point, Elliot's camera mysteriously dies and erases all of its files, what? which has never ever happened before. Then, later in the video, the ghost hunters end up capturing something rather difficult to explain. Oh, let's go, mate, let's go. I'm fascinated already by what's happened. Yeah, I'm trying to almost put it to the back of my mind and just let's see. See mm. if what kind of things are actually here. Music room? Mate, this house looks freaky as F. Yeah? I, I don't think it works. Plan Try it. Shall I? Well, I'm gonna have a go at it and just. Now look! <laughs> mate, he's literally Rambo in ghost investigations. He's got a broken arm and everything, mate. Let's go! <laughs> I told you what. <laughs> Now you play. <laughs> Good job. That laugh. It does look pretty creepy up there, you know. What's your name? Stephanie! If it fucking spoke, I'd be a kid in your face. Like candy. <laughs> Bathroom? Well, lack of. Oh, oh shit, I just went downstairs. That's the kitchen, so yeah, that makes sense. So he's stalled in the kitchen <clears throat> and the bathroom. Makes sense. The left. Oh. Why does it stink up here? Oh, mate, that, look at that scene there, mate. That looks so horrific. Imagine just some shadow bitch coming out of there like that. <laughs> Not walking, just hovering. Just hovering like that. <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Is it you? No. Why aren't the doors shut? One sec, folks. I have to go uh, check on somebody here. Okay. Ah, uh, what's how come cough's not uh streaming tonight? What's up with that? It's twelve only twelve twenty five my time. What did he do? Oh he just left. 
28 minutes ago. Three seconds. All right. We streamed this two hours ago, Uprising. Oh, I hope he's okay. All right. Sorry, folks. I just wanted to check on Koth. He's one of my favorite uh, YouTubers. Um, actually, I have quite a few who are my favorites. Uh, Bad Sad. He's one of my best friends, actually. Outside of John, uh, Bad Sad or Tom, uh, my, one of my best friends. He's always streaming, this guy. He does some pretty cool stuff. Um, I like Wild West Faces. Um... I'm sorry for just skipping to this real quick. I just thought I'd mention a few channels. I watch Worth to Buy sometimes. The Y Files is pretty uh, cool. Scary Things is pretty cool. If you're into lighthouses, New England lighthouses, um, it's pretty cool. Scary Interesting is really quite cool as well. Uh, Slater Days Gaming, I watch him for. Uh, for um, Project Zomboid. Uh, let me see. Blackjack Bill. I watch him for... Uh, oh, it's that game. Star Citizen. Wartime Stories is really cool. Um, <clears throat> Ready for History is kind of neat. Um, Sid Dev... It's about uh, the war in Ukraine, that sort of stuff. Uh, Deep Sea Odysseys, or Oddities, I mean, are really, really, really cool. Um, hmm. Matthew Markham. Hmm. Why am I subscribed to him? Hmm. Interesting. I'll keep them there. I don't know why. See, I, you know, <clears throat> I try to support uh, all starter YouTube channels. So, and when they reach a certain amount, like 20,000 or something like that, I won't, I won't make any videos on them. Uh, Legacy of the West is quite cool. Walk the Plank is really cool. Now, I used to watch Urbex Hill until I found out that on one of his videos, and <clears throat> I mean, I do watch occasionally, but not often now, uh, kind of a rare thing, but I caught him doing something I knew was kind of not right, was kind of fake, so I got really upset about that. <clears throat> um, I watched Tropical Tidbits for Weather. Uh, Dunstan, he does some really nice stuff as well. He's one of the guys I really appreciate. Um, yeah, he does all kinds of cool stuff. He uploads about four times a week. Hurricane track is for hurricanes. Um, so I keep an eye on through the summertime, but hurricanes, that sort of thing. Uh, Cotswold Explorer, he's really cool. <clears throat> Brick and mortar is really neat. Uh, Obsidian Ant, I like him. He's a pretty cool guy. I keep up with the news for some of these things for space games. Now, Dave Sterling, I, I can't pronounce his last name, Sulinski. Um, he's really good. And he's a fellow Nova Scotian, so there you go. Now, geez, my second channel, for just all resource. Uh, there's Jonga, that's John. Now, if you want to learn about history, Historia Sibelis is really something to watch. He is incredible, this guy. Um, his work is actually used in schools. Um, he's really good. Table, table or tragic tabletop is pretty cool. Bab audio books, all kinds of audio books there. 
and Monty played games. One of the, my, uh, he's, <clears throat> I've known him for years. And Lottery is the one fellow who I've been following for the past, well, whenever he started his channel. He's really a cool character. Uh, so there you go, folks. Those are the channels I happen to be a part of. Um, but anywho, let's get back to what I was doing. I don't even know why I decided just to go ahead and do that. But anyway, let's go back to it. Sorry, folks. Apart from that one. Shush. And that one. Which room shall we go in? You talking to me? Oh, there's a knock. Oh! This know? one here! Whoa. What the fuck? Hang on! Me? Oh, there's a knock. What were you open? Oh Whoa. my shit in hell, mate! Get in there, run! Lick it! Whoa! Face that. I scared the f*** me. Did you touch it? No, I did not. That's what she <laughs> said. <laughs> I caught that on camera. I'm not joking, I jumped so much I gave myself whiplash. So we went upstairs during the look around and for some reason all of the doors were shut. Get in there, mate! So Elliot decided to ask out to the spirits which door we should go through first. And then I think it was the first door on the left, we heard a knock come through from the inside. So I went up to the door, because he was about to knock on it to see if we could get the knock to, to answer back. And then it's as if someone punched the door really fast from the outside or just jolted it open from the inside. And you can see I didn't touch it. it you, I wasn't, I'm not fully in frame, so it's not totally obvious, but I definitely did not touch that door. Both my feet were firm on the ground and my, my arm must have been about three inches away before it actually opened. Ow. I've just caught that on camera. That's amazing. That's just moved on camera. Do it again! I heard a knock from in it. Yeah, you said which room should we go in? And then, <laughs> mate, if you if He's, you don't go in that room, <laughs> this guy's in crazy. If you don't go in that room, you hear a knock, and then that just opened itself. Shush! Here we go. Okay, oh. can I just point out, right? If there's dragging, oh. you know the dragging yeah. that we heard. Right, I'm just going to say, if that was a ghost, just saying, yeah. they're incredibly strong. While Joe and Elliot are upstairs, they notice a strange smell and that all the doors are closed. Oh, they're mate. Was it like a, an eggy smell? Was it an eggy smell? That's not the high-protein high diet, mate. Eggy smell is like, like sulfur. Shadow bastards, mate. And Elliot asks, which room should we go in? And then a knock is heard from the door right next to this guy is hilarious. ...to them, and then, out of nowhere, the whole door moves all on its own, as if something inside the room wants the ghost hunters to end. And there isn't any breeze. You can see there's no breeze. Well, you can't see there's no breeze, but it, it doesn't sound like there's a breeze. To Joe and Elliot take a look inside the room, but there's no one in there. The pair continue their investigation, keen to contact whatever presence resides in the abandoned house. And at around the 35 minute mark, they capture something very, very creepy. Oh, let's go, let's go. We're calling out to any spirits. Can you make a sound? What did he whistle for? Yeah. Mate, just a simple little knock like that. F look at you, freaks me out, man. Is their camera legit glitching or is that an effect? No 
way, mate. No way. No way. I don't know what it is, mate, but this seems a little bit too legit for me. You know what I'm saying? This seems a little bit too legit, mate. And it's not like boom, 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 over the top. It's proper fucking steps. Let's go, go, Siri. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, mate, I would have just shit myself everywhere, mate, honestly. Well, I wouldn't, but... Did someone just walk up the stairs? Ah, uh, yeah, we're in the Rockies. <laughs> Are you on the stairs? It sounds exactly like us walking. I would say it sounds a bit more heavier than us walking. It's too thumpy, it's just a... But not the bit in between, like the shuffle. Yeah, it's just someone tapping the foot. Like heels. Yeah. Oh, mate. Do you want me to whistle again? What's the whistling all about, mate? We actually we did when we heard the whistle earlier. I just think it was almost like, like it enjoys whistling. Mm. Oh, they heard a whistle earlier, so they're sort of replicating it. Okay, 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 okay. I just the Imagine if he just gets flown over the edge now. Shush. Oh, you're having a laugh, mate. Get your pistols out, mate. Was that in there? Oh, we're going in, we're going in. That's what she said. That was loud. Hello? It's Joe and Elliot. Oh, mate, that was bloody brilliant. They're upstairs in the haunted house. A loud knock followed by footsteps can be clearly heard walking along the wooden floorboards of the abandoned house. The pair mention they can even feel the force of the footsteps as if something we can't see just walked up the stairs towards them. Mm. Elliot whistles again and an even louder sound is heard coming from one of the upstairs rooms. But when they go to check, no one's there. Ghost Theory's viewers were left stunned by these creepy captures inside this haunted house. That door, mate, was on another level. And the pair have earned a reputation as being one of the few legitimate paranormal investigation channels on YouTube. Right, I okay, I might have to um, get in contact with these guys, mate, see if I can react to their channel. I myself and their viewers have no doubt that the stranger... ...creepy captures inside this haunted house. That door, mate, was on another level. And the pair have earned a reputation as being... I'm lying. Okay, folks. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to move on there. Um... But I just want to let everybody know that uh, if any of these channels that I'm watching or something like that that's in this video, if they want to, you know, contact me through email, just it's on my channel, all right, like every other channel that's out there. And uh, just let me know if you want me to take the video down, I'll take it down. It's no big thing. All right. Because all rights go to every video that uh, Beardo does is... It's his property, it's not mine. And so on, so on, so on. Anyway, let's go on here. On to the video.
I just hope I haven't seen it. At first, I thought maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me. That was not you. That was clear over here. Cole. Tanner. I can... Oh, just let people know. I don't agree, and I don't just agree with anything I watch. Unless something is really, you know, really kind of ticked me off, then of course I'll uh, comment in the comments area. But um, just let you know, I don't stand either way. I just watch these things purely for entertainment. I can barely believe the response we got. They know how to build tension with some. Oh, also let you know too, is because you see here mindseed.tv.com making evidence. I'm not uh, recording this to say don't go to their channel. That's not what I'm doing this for. I'm just showing you that I'm. Uh, this is what I do when I'm not gaming, and I'm so bored and I wanted to record something. So anyway, this is why I'm doing it. And if you want to check out, uh, you know, Mindseed TV, go for it. Watch them to your heart's content, or any of these other channels, you know, whatever, you know. Anyway, let's continue. And Does it feel cold? Though? And I want to know what kind of weird feeling you're getting. We were informed about a place called the Anchorage Inn, which is supposed to be this historical mansion. I guess it's kind of turned into a museum over the years. Oh, it's a creepy lot as of it is. people that have lived there in the past have passed away within the home, and since then it's been classified as a haunted location. Who classifies them as haunted? Is there an official list? I would like to see such list, especially if there's one in the UK. Or to visit the mall. It turns out that the mansion has somewhat of a dark history. Quite a few of the previous owners have died here, and even though the house has been passed down generation to generation, it's believed that the ones who have died here cannot leave for some reason. There were a ton of reports from what different saying? guests, workers, and employees that they had been seeing apparitions, stirring up the place, and just a lot of activity in general. In fact, there's been so much communication that the owners believe that they can identify the spirits that reside within the home. They said there was a little girl named Clara, an elderly woman named Henrietta, and also an older gentleman named Putton, and I guess he was one of the original owners of the Putton. house. We were also informed that there was a fourth entity that couldn't be identified, and this one was supposed to be a little bit more of a sinister and dark nature to where people feel uncomfortable when they experience or encounter this entity. A lot of other paranormal investigation teams that have been to this location and done their overnight stays have claimed that at certain points of their investigation, they did feel like a dark presence with them. So we were all a little bit on edge going into this location. Just get in there and I Man, that's creepy stuff right there. No spiders. Man, oh man, that's creepy. Sprinting upstairs, then, but it just sped up the mass. Here, there's a lot of activity up in this section. Oh, it's freezing back here.
So I like that they pointed out their own reflections and stuff instead of just claiming, oop, look, ghost. Some channels do. an awesome building to be able to go into. Huh. That's the door apparently where one of the girls said something doesn't want to be bothered in here. <clears throat> Guaranteed he's going to bother this? it with the Ouija board. Show yourself to us. Hello. Welcome to a unique horror experience that will give you goosebumps. You will have to explore places mm. where no one would ever have the courage That's interesting. to enter. Never places seen this. haunted by evil entities. Okay. But you cannot scream. If you scream, ah, the game is over. This has got to be one of the most outrageous video game names that I've ever seen. But to its defense, it does just that. You've got to be... Okay. You play... And oh god, there's something behind me. How do I open up this door? Okay, that was. Hold the... on, is this game even sold right now, or is this? It's free. What are you kidding me? No way. Follow the. Okay, this could definitely can't be it. Hmm. I don't know. Gameplay walkthrough. Oh, that's his name. His name of his channel. For goodness sakes, Michael, you idiot. God, I'm such an idiot. Uh, well, what's the name of the walk? What's the name of the game? Um, I can't believe I chose that. Oh, Mike, you should be. Just new VHS course. So, okay. I can't believe I did that. I'm such a bonehead. Well, that's not it. Is this game? Does this game even exist under this uh, under this name? Oh, it does have the explanation point. Okay. So it is that. All right. We've got to watch this then. Um, it's only two fifty nine. How much money do I got? $2.12. Oh, well, that's going to take an awful lot of gameplay for me to get the cards from this. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, let's add that to my wish list then. Okay, let's go back and watch this because I'm now interested in games. So. Open. The game did say when you hear some sort of noise, do not look behind you. Oh, I see what's going on here. This game is going to take me through uh, certain types of psychological traumas. Okay. Oh, this is that same house. We just played. We just played a game the other day that had this same house. It's also the same. I, I, I did it. I, I, I didn't freaking scream. All right, so we're gonna try and talk. All right. Can you guys hear me? Oh, by the way, all rights uh, to this video belong to this fella. Uh, just to let you know.
if he ever contacts me and says, uh, you know, take down my, take down your video, I will take down my video. Please tell me you can hear me. God. It's going to really suck if I ever. Okay, apparently, um, I guess the ghosts hear you and stuff like that, I guess. Record this video and you cannot hear me. Anyways, we're here now. The most important thing is that we cannot scream. We must be silent at all times. I don't even know what to do right now. Feel like... Oh, wow. Wow, I almost screamed. Alright, it's okay. It's happening. That's good. Nobody outside in the window. That's excellent. Do you guys like when I talk to you like this? Nice and quiet? Does it put you to sleep? Or does Not it really. Or fuck out? Because it's kind of creepy. That's, that's just me talking. Maybe some of you guys are kinky, but it's kind of creepy. No, I'm not kinky, buddy. Alright. It's fine. I think whenever the game does a noise, we've got to go and investigate. That's how we progress further. Or I can stay still and just walk back and forth like an idiot and let that timer run out, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I call big brain plays. Is there somebody outside? Alright, we're going back up. I will say... Uh, it'd be I nice... It would be nice if this guy shot up. I do think this is a phenomenal formula for horror games. So unique. I mean, he just, he's describing everything, and it's like, shut up! What's going on? Where do I go now? Is the laundry room open? No. Essentially, I think this is a walking simulator. I don't think... There's even a button we can press to interact. Which is kind of annoying, but... Language, right. dude. Okay, here we go. I gotta clear my throat. But I know that if I clear my throat, I'm screwed. Okay, that was creepy. That that oh that's that was pretty cool actually. That was well done. Uh oh, there you go. Okay, well that is where I'm gonna end this. But that's uh I definitely have to give that game a try. And it's so cheap. I wonder how long it uh you could play for. But anyway. I know you're probably saying, Mike, Mike, keep playing, keep playing. But if you want to see the video, then go to his channel, I guess. Anyway, no, no, let's, you know what? Let's keep playing. All right, we're good. I think she's behind me. They said not to look. If you hear a noise behind you, do not look. <laughs> This is pretty creepy. This is pretty creepy. Yeah. No two ways about it. There you go, Tom. A game for you to play, buddy. Oh my god. Get out of here. Okay, there's a reason why I don't want to watch this. It's because 
because if I do get it, I don't want to, um, now I don't know if this is all random stuff or not, but I don't want to ruin the experience for myself, so, um, there you go, <laughs> don't look for hollow, as the name of the game, like I did, look for shh, explanation, okay, well, there you go, let's get back to this. And we won't bother you for the rest of the night. Lies. Show yourself to this thermal one time. Or light up the EMF detector in Colton's hand. Let us know you're here. And by letting us know you're here, that'll say that you don't want to be bothered. There's another door back here. Is there? Yeah. Get in there. A jar. I said. Oh yeah. It's kind of barricaded off though. Well, we'll leave this door open because they said that they get a weird feeling from this closet. And I want to know what kind of weird feeling they're getting. I guess we'll find out. Will you? I have this ghost tube SLS app. I've got a few of the ghost tube apps. And it must be said, these SLS stick figures, they don't just randomly appear. Um, I have a couple of areas in my house where I've worked out that it's picking up a shape out of furniture. But for the most part, it doesn't really just randomly go off. Um, I spent a good chunk of time using it and it's never shown anything that I can't work out as um like we've got a vase in the living room with a flower spray or whatever you want to call it that it sometimes picks up on but other than that we've not really caught anything with it um which adds a bit of legitimacy to when you do capture something and these don't seem like the type of guys will just say right that, that that's a ghost they'll they'll look into it to see if there's a shape there that is mistaken as a human. The door. Show me. Show me yourself. Okay, sorry about that. I was talking and I forgot my mic my microphone was uh muted, but I'm gonna stop it there for this video. Um because I've already watched it. I already know everything about it. So if you wanna watch what he actually saw, because I saw it too, which was interesting. And you could tell it was not right. Um but anyway, you can go to his channel. I won't put the link to any of them, all you have to do is type or beard or get scared in your search and it'll come up um hmm. what else do I want to watch here oh the Newcastle channel um it's quite cool actually it has all kinds of I don't like uh the two dudes that do this they're it it's so stupid but anyway I mean I don't know them personally but I don't like watching them um but they do have all kinds of movies on here, like horror movies, of course, you know, like Mr. Frost and Exorcist 3 and Night of the Living Dead, which I think everybody seems to get. Uh, um, yeah, some pretty cool movies and stuff. The Omen. Um, Legend of Lizzie Borden. I saw that back in whenever that was uh, on TV. Um, what else is here? Love at first bite. <laughs> oh man. Um, <clears throat> what else do they have here? Blackula? Yeah, Blackula.
A lot of this stuff is back in the 70s and before then. Uh, what else we got here? The House to Drip Blood. Well, it's not, it's not a bad channel. At least you get to watch the movies. I usually skip over those two dudes. I mean, I find them to be so corny. Oh, Cash for Sight. Uh, uploaded a new one today? What? Already? You won't believe the strange things going on right now. Hold on, yeah, I did watch that. Did do anything live, I wonder? No, not recent. Uh, we love boxing, Rick to the Ukrainian. It's all about, uh, this is really quite a cool channel, actually. Um, Rain Man Rays. Oh, yeah, Automotive. That's a pretty cool channel. I don't know why. Sometimes watching him talk about cars and working on cars because he's a mechanic, uh, it's really strange. I, I can't explain it. Time Stories. Actually, I'm in the mood to share with you guys uh, Mr. Ballin or Balin. He really exaggerates the truth of a story that he tells. <clears throat> I've taken the task on that, on some of his stories, saying, look, man, I know that story and I know everything about it. And you're not telling it straight to the people. Because people believe him. As everything he speaks is truth, and it's like, no, it's not. <clears throat> He'll really exaggerate on some wild stuff. Like I said, the Wi Files is really quite cool. Um, now, what which channel is it that I was looking here? Um, wartime stories. Some of this stuff is really cool. Uh, Kinds of ghost tanks, pale crawlers, and mountains. <clears throat> uh, the night ships in Afghanistan. Um, okay, this one I haven't heard. <clears throat> Oh, before we continue, uh, Wartime Stories owns all this, so, hey, you know, <clears throat> I don't. So, uh, Wartime Stories, if you contact me through my email, uh, and you say, take down the video, I'll take down the video. No biggie. Just use my email, don't strike my channel. I mean, God, that is so cheesy to do that to someone. I would never do that to anybody. I just don't know why people get so messed up in the head about things. But anyway, there you go. Let's watch a little bit of it. Welcome to the smoke pit. In the military, a smoke pit is obviously where troops go to feed their nicotine addictions. But also, it's a place to swap stories. Funny, tragic, and most certainly bizarre. The kinds of stories that aren't usually welcome in a professional work environment where soldiers are meant to remain serious and focused on their work. The telling of such unbelievable stories is thus relegated to the smoke pit. Here on Wartime Stories, we do not discriminate. While the main focus of the channel is military-related stories, the smoke pit is open to anyone, active duty, veterans, and civilians from all walks of life. But in this episode, we will be hearing from three former service members. Chris, a veteran of the Canadian Army, a U.S. soldier who we will refer to by his YouTube handle, Sector SOS, and Uriah, a U.S. Marine. My name is Chris. I'm ex-Canadian Army. This happened in Afghanistan, Operation Athena, the Canadian contingent to ISAF. It was during winter, late 2000s, Kandahar province. Our company group, comprised of mechanized infantry mounted in Lav 3s and some Leopard tanks, engineers, combat service support, we deployed for a four or five day operation to sweep some villages along the Argandav River. On the first night, we halted in the middle of the riverbed, which was dry at this time of the year. 
It's about a half a kilometer wide, so if you park in the middle of it, you'd get a clear view for a couple hundred meters on either side, making it impossible for any bad guys to sneak up on you in the night. For these kinds of overnight halts, we'd stop in a big circle with the fighting vehicles, tanks, and LAV 3s around the perimeter, facing out, while the support vehicles parked in the middle. The vehicles on the perimeter would take turns being up, providing security for their part of the ring. Picture 20 vehicles in a circle, with the ones at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock being up, meaning their crews are awake, slewing their turrets, scanning their thermal imagers, and covering their sectors. Then, after an hour, the next vehicle to the right of each of those takes over and relieves the previous vehicle and so forth throughout the night. You do this, of course, so that everyone can get some sleep, but also provide constant security against enemy attacks. After we formed our perimeter, got the dismounts out, and started settling in for the night, the shift schedule came over the radio, informing us that we had the second shift scheduled to start in an hour, and another one or two shifts later in the night. The back of one of these LAVs is basically a big open compartment with benches on either side that the infantry dismount sits on, but the infantry guys are now sleeping in a shallow ditch behind the LAV, so the gunner and the crew commander, which is me, got to sleep inside on those benches. Better than sleeping in the dirt, I suppose. The driver sleeps in his station up front. Since we had to be up in an hour for security watch anyway, the gunner, driver, and I decided to just lay awake in our sleeping bags reading, watching movies, and playing PSP respectively until it was time for our shift. About a half an hour before our shift started, we heard and felt the distinct sounds and movements of someone climbing up onto the LAV. It's a heavy vehicle, but you still know when someone's climbing onto it. And in that scenario, it probably means someone's coming to wake you up and make you do something. So the gunner and I, laying across from each other, you know, we look at each other, we sit up, you know, give a collective sigh, bracing for one of the hatches above our heads to pop open and to start being told what to do by some sergeant. But nothing happened. It just went quiet. I was confused. We would have heard and felt if they had climbed or jumped off the LAV. I stood up and opened the hatch above the bench so I could pop my head out and see what was going on. There was nobody on top of the LAV that I could see, but the LAV has a big turret and I figured maybe whoever it was went to the driver's hatch up front and was talking to him. So I climbed right out of my hatch, got up on top of the LAV, then climbed on top of the turret to look towards the driver's hatch, and there was still nobody in sight, and nowhere for anyone to hide. Now I'm really perplexed. I have heard some really strange stories uh, from the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Some really strange ones. From on top of the turret, I can see all the ground between me and the flanking vehicles. I can see where the troops are sleeping. I can see the support vehicles in the center of the ring, and I have a clear view of the riverbed for hundreds of meters. There isn't a single soul moving around anywhere. And at this point, I go from perplexed to concerned. We are in hostile territory, after all, and having unknown persons crawling on your LAV in the dead of night is a bad thing. I get back in and explain the situation to the other two guys and instruct them to lock all the hatches from the inside since we apparently can't account for who or what is crawling on our LAV. From there, we just waited for our shift to start, performed it as usual, and went back to bed. We heard no other mysterious people or things crawling on top of the LAV. But the next day, our driver told us something crazy. That next morning, our company group moved to the first village we were sweeping, so we dismounted our infantry and then provided overwatch with our turret. As soon as things quieted down on the radio, the driver got on the intercom and told us something else happened later that night. He said that at some point between shifts, he decided he couldn't sleep and started watching movies on his laptop. As he was zoning out, all of a sudden, he felt a hand on the back of his head that brushed forward over the top, running fingers through his hair. He whipped his head around, expecting to see one of us had crawled past the turret to mess with him, but nobody was there. The gunner and I did not believe him at first. We thought maybe he was trying to scare us by adding to the weird experience we had earlier that night. But after a while, it became clear he was being dead serious. He was genuinely creeped out. 
In the days that followed, we became convinced that something supernatural was going on with that LAV. We debated trying to investigate whether any of the previous occupants of that LAV had been killed. These vehicles stay in Afghanistan for the entire occupation, and they're handed from outgoing troops to incoming troops when the tour rotations happen. We decided, however, that we probably just didn't want to know. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave that there. Um, actually, I wanted to um, go to Mr. Balin. One summer day. <clears throat> I mean, I do like him. Oh, geez, he's got an awful lot of subscribers. Um, thank You know, I, I'm just so happy that I only have these amount of subscribers that I have because to me, once you reach a certain level, the channel's no longer yours. It becomes the people who watch you. It's their channel now. It's no longer your channel. My first uh, Just All in One Resource channel, I had over 25,000, and I just simply up and deleted it because one morning I woke up thinking, what, what the hell am I doing? I don't ask for any money. I don't, I don't have a Patreon account. I have over 25,000 subscribers, and the channel's no longer mine. I, I just, so I just up and deleted it. That's it. Gone. You know, and I, I took three months off and came back and started my just all-in-one resource channel again and started off small, and I hope it doesn't grow. I'm serious. I hope it doesn't grow because I don't want to, <clears throat> um, you know, I just don't want to end up... Uh, um, how in the name do you spell Afghanistan again? Ooh, the heck. I don't know. I can't be. Holy crap, I did. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find uh, Naval Sea Eagles Rogue. I think, yes, this is the one. This is the one here. The paranormal. This is really a cool story, guys. Um, uh, if I can remember, I'll um, include the link to it in the description. I'm, I can't promise you guys if I'm going to do it or not, because simply because of the fact my I'm all over the place. But just type in, just go to Mr. Balin's uh, YouTube channel and type in Afghanistan. Um. And you'll see it there. This is a really cool story. I, I'll, I'll probably play Formal a little does bit not of it. Really have a place in the so military, there you go. despite what anybody tells you. It's just not something that gets discussed. Now, I was a bit of an anomaly. I was in the Navy for seven years. Uh, five of those years were spent on a SEAL team, and maybe because we were in such small teams, people had to put up with my weirdness and my interest in you know the strange happenings around the world. But, you know, really that was an anomaly. And I think it comes from the culture inside the military where you have a group of people that has such a intense job that's so rooted on practical approaches to problem solving. There is no time to be theorizing about how demons and ghosts and things that are out of this world are having an impact because we need to focus on what's happening right now in front of us. There's no space for anything else. And so when you do hear stories coming out of the military that are paranormal in nature, it isn't that you should inherently believe them, but rather you should understand that if they have come to the conclusion that this is paranormal, they have ruled out virtually everything else. And so today I'm gonna to share a military paranormal story that happened in Afghanistan in 2009 when eight US Marines were stationed at this very isolated observation post in the middle of Helmand province. And some very strange things happened out there that the Marines that were there believe are still plaguing them to this day. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, you've come to the right channel because that's all I do and I upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, I would encourage you to play Ding Dong Ditch on the like button's house and then also subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. In June of 2009, U.S. and NATO forces... That is one cool background. 
surged into Afghanistan. Troop numbers escalated dramatically in preparation for this massive offensive against the Taliban. During this surge, a very small team of Marines, eight Marines, were given a mission to go to an observation post in Helmand province where a group of British soldiers were stationed at the time. An observation post, or OP as it's called in the military, is any location where you're able to observe, hence the name. Most OPs, if not all OPs are located on high ground because that provides you the best view. OPs are very strategically valuable. You have the higher ground and you can see what's going on around you. And so as a result, OPs become prime targets for attack. Now the OP that these Marines were going to, OP Rock, was a little bit unique. It was strategically very important, but it didn't really have the higher ground. All around it were other large pieces of terrain, which meant if you poke your head up for too long, you might get shot from a sniper on the mountain. And so That's OP insane. Rock was like a very dangerous and isolated place to be. Not to mention laughably small and had almost no amenities. It was basically a couple of Hesco barriers, those big brown squares that get filled with sand and dirt to stop bullets. And then, you know, not even cots. They slept literally on the ground on sleeping pads and a couple of gilly tents overhead. That was about it. And so these Marines were going to be there for 60 days where they were not gonna be able to go anywhere. They were just isolated and stuck on this tiny little wasteland in the middle of Afghanistan. The eight Marines were led by Sergeant Green and his second in command was Corporal Lena. The other six junior Marines were Zolik, Hoyt, Wilson, Parker, Smith, and Gibbs. After driving their up-armored vehicles all the way through the snaking pass, they get to OP Rock, and the British soldiers are there anxiously waiting for them. Normally, anytime you turn over with any other unit, you do something called turnover operations, where because you're new to the area, you wanna go out and do like a presence patrol or something to get a feel for the area with the people who have been there to kind of give you a lay of the land and say, hey, look out for this area. We think there's IEDs over there. Remember, if you're over here, you're in plain sight of the enemy, they can shoot you. But when they got there, the British were so anxious to leave. They did not do turnover ops. The British just looked totally weathered and beaten down and ragged like they'd been fighting at OP Rock for decades, but they'd only been there for 60 days. The same. Okay, I don't think it's right that I play the entire thing. Um, but the thing is, too, you know, like I said, if anybody, you know, contacted me, uh, told me to take it all down or take down the video, I would, uh, without issue. Um, well, look at it this way, too. You get free advertising. I mean, come on. But anyway, I think that is going to be the end of my video for tonight. Um... I'm not going to go to bed, but I want to finish watching this one. I haven't watched it in a long time. I've already watched this one already. I already know the end result for that. Uh, but anyway, I just kind of hope you liked what I showed you and what I do, you know, when I'm not playing games. Um, also, too, I really want to take a better look at that game. Um, shush. I mean, I'm not a fan of the guy playing it, but, I mean, you know. I mean, I'm not a fan of his, but, and I won't subscribe to his channel because he's, he's not my type of person I watch, so. Um, I mean, I'll give him a thumbs up, but that's as far as I'll go. Anyway, take care, folks. Have a good one. And, like I said, to anybody uh who sees their video in this video and you want me to take down the uh, the video itself, I will just email me. Just go to, well, you know how it is, right? And go view email address and send me off an email. I check my emails several times a day and I'll take it down. Just ask. Don't strike the channel, guys. I mean, if you guys were using something that I knew was on my channel, I sure I could care less. <clears throat> because I'm not in this for the long run or to make money. Because I don't have, like I said, I don't ask for money. I don't have a patron account. I don't have anything. Because, to be quite honest with you, my content is crap. It just is. All I do is play games. I do my thing. You know, 
and by my time, I play games with my friends. You know, occasionally I'll play online, like I'll play with Tom. I'll sometimes will play with John. Um, that's if he's ever on, which is kind of rare for him. He's not doing well. He's, he's really quite sick. Um, but that's it, you know. And there's no, there's no need for you to subscribe to my channel or give me a thumbs up in any of my videos. There's, there's no requirement of that kind. You know, if you like something, say, hey, cool, thanks. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do much of anything than that. You know. But anyway, take care. Have a good one.